Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling page. Today we're doing a really simple art journal page and we're just playing with mics for a relaxation. So I'm starting off in my Dina Wakely original journal I think and this is just one of the watercolour pages. I haven't gessoed my page, I'm just going in and painting. So I'm, I have no thoughts on this apart from the fact that I knew I wanted to use bright colours, I wanted to get out of my head a little bit, I wanted to have fun, I wanted to relax. So this is what I do a lot of the time when I don't have a plan but I just want to play in my journal which is just apply paint to my background, usually lots of different colours and um, have fun. So I've started off with some turquoise, some blushing and some pink. Quite often when I'm doing these sorts of pages, I try and experiment with colours that I don't use, well, I use these colours all the time, I shouldn't really say that, but um, different colour combinations. So, for example, with the turquoise, yes, I use pinks a lot, but I don't tend to use those paler pink colours with it. The colour I spilt into the middle was the new um, Rouge Gloss Spray from Dina Wakely. And it's a beautiful pinky red colour and um, it's very, very fluid. So obviously you could see that as I pour it out on page. But it is still acrylic paint, just like the paints that I'm using here. These are just obviously a little bit more heavy bodied. So, you know, you can mix and match and as you go along. What I was really looking for with this is um, seeing what colours really worked with that, particularly that rouge in the middle, because it's a new colour into my palette and I wanted to see how it worked with some of my favourites. So I'm just using some different brushes and making some different marks over the top. So I used a flat brush with the cheddar to, to make those orangey yellow marks. I'm using the marine with a small round brush. Now I'm going in with a really tiny brush to make really tiny dots. And you'll see that I'm overlapping the mark making, which is really important. And I'm not keeping it to a particular color. I'm not, for example, putting all the yellow in all the turquoise spots. I'm overlapping them, so I've got some of the pink, I've got some of the turquoise, and it's going up through the other mark making as well. If you keep everything sort of stuck in one little colour section, or one little grid section, for example, um, you'll find everything looks very gridded, very rigid. Um, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want it to make it look, I suppose, a little bit more organic or a little bit more flowing across the page, um, I would suggest you sort of move your marks across the page too. Also by doing that, it's a really great way with your mark making to um, hide any, you know, rough edges or, you know, colour blends that didn't quite work together. So you can sort of actively put your mark making over those bits, which will help sort of push it into the background a little bit. So I just added in some pen work as well and now I'm just going back in with a little bit more of the turquoise because it got a little bit lost in my mic making. So I've just um, a sp a sp 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 splattered some in the background and I've also splattered some um, tangelo which is like a red orange colour in the background too. So those were both the gloss sprays which I like a fluid acrylic ink. So while they splatter really well because they sit up a little bit raised on the or it's a little puddle of um, ink or spray, you do need to dry it off before you sort of can keep going. That's why I was using my heat gun on it. Then I decided I wanted to put a quote at the bottom, just sort of to reflect where my head was at and what th this page meant to me. So I'm using a food ball pen to write on my page. I'm using skinny, a skinny font. I'm extending the um, ascenders and descenders, so you know, got long T's and long P's and so on, um, to fill in the space and just to make it look a little bit consistent. I'm also decided with this one that I'm going to fill in the center of all my um, letters that have centers, so like E's and O's and A's and so on, just to make it look a little bit different. The final thing that I do is, um, once I've dried it off, is go back in with my white pen and just put a highlight on each of the letters, which seems a little bit redundant, um, but you'll see in the close-up at the end, it just helps pop the letters out of the background. And, you know, I could have made the letters a little bit thicker, so they would have, 
you know, stood out a little bit more. But by keeping everything kind of thin in the way that I've done and putting the dots back in, it kind of echoes the mic making I've got in the background. So it's sort of all about repeating those patterns and those um, features again on your page. I'm just trying to find a pen that works. I finally realized my other fine Posca paint pen had finally died or run out of ink so I was just priming up a new one and it's working a lot better as you can see so when you've actually got the right tools and equipment things work a lot better so as I get to the end I'm just going back over some of those ones that didn't quite work with the um, gel pen I had just to make sure it's nice and sorted and I think I missed out on a B there. So here you can see how the mark making overlaps, how the different tools make the different marks on the page and down the bottom you can see how just adding that little bit of white around it helps push those letters out of the page. So the only certainty in uncertain times is that we'll not be the same when we exit the store and we'll be stronger which I really love that quote and I like the idea that you know even going into a storm, there's always a brightness at the end, which sort of those colours on the page made me really happy to look at. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.